playing football by my bins again, I'll not only spank them, but their parents also. Quite right, Nightfeld boy. Teach the Oik some respect. <laughs> what are you doing? Just a few bubbles. God, turn off that bloody calculator, will you, boy? <laughs> Jeffrey, don't do that, darling. You'll mark the table. Janine, what is your brother doing here in our house? I told you, just doing some bubbles. I invited Charlton for dinner. Is that a problem? Um, hey, <laughs> do you remember that place you went to for your anniversary? What was it called? The Rest Something. Restaurant. That's it. <laughs> and remember, when I got up on that big spoon and the man shouted at me to get down... <laughs> Cherry tells me you've had a loft conversion done, Buffy. Mm. You ought to get one, knifey boy. And put another 25 grand on the value of our place. Yes, except that in your case, it's a bit like putting lipstick on a dead tramp and pretending he's a supermodel. Uh, what do you mean? Charlton, don't you have a friend who converts lost? Yeah. He's got a ladder and everything. You know, ours was only £15,000. <laughs> Now, do I take that to mean you won't be getting a loft con, old boy? Not for 15 bloody grand, we won't. Well, why don't you get out a bank loan? That's what I did. Yes, and I imagine the manager also let you fondle his buttocks. What? No. Of course not. Don't worry, Buffy. He's just jealous because I won't fondle his buttocks. Hmm. Well, maybe it was rather a silly suggestion. Well, here's another suggestion. Why don't you bugger off home, you appalling snobs, coming in here with your fancy love talk? Nice. No, he's right. We are snobs. Damn it, man. <laughs> you know she's menopausal. Uh, Jerry! Sherry, darling, remember your pills? Jerry, That's it. Pills. Run off back to your no, ponced-up no, blue shed. Snobs! No, Bloody loft snobs! <laughs> That's it. Don't cry. Don't... Look. Drop it. Oh. I don't think these poppadoms are properly cooked. <laughs> My sons, listen to me very carefully. I am dying. <laughs> to ensure the bloodline endures, I have left instructions with my executors that before you may legally inherit my farm, you must both marry and produce a son. It is vital that you each father and heir. Uh, heir. An heir. He wants us to adopt the rabbit. No, no, forget about hares and rabbits. But you said... I said heir. I want you to father an heir, not a... Heir, H-E-I-R, heir, an heir. <laughs> he sounds like a plugger. <laughs> <sighs> that was one of our worst dinner parties yet. Why did you have to throw all that paint at them? Don't blame me. If you hadn't invited your idiot brother, I wouldn't have been half as volatile. You know how he irritates me. It's got nothing to do with Charlton. This is about you and money. Oh, don't accuse me of being tight. You're the one who accepts a monthly allowance on top of your wages, Janine. Oh, for the hundredth time, my work at the old people's home is unpaid and voluntary. Besides, the last time I asked for more housekeeping, you pretended to choke to death on the chrysalis. <laughs> Come on, knife. Why can't we get a loft conversion? 
<laughs> we need the extra space. Geoffrey's room is filled with so much of your railway memorabilia, he can't even get in there. But the boy likes trains. Isn't that so, Sam? Actually... You see, Janine, all boys like trains. You there! You better not be thinking of paying near my bins! I beg your pardon, Mr Knife. Don't you take that tone with me, you grubby hoodlum! No, he's out at some railway exhibition until late. Charlton, are you sure this friend of yours can get the loft finished today? Oh, yeah, yeah, no worries. He's very reliable. It was bloody drug addicts were playing round our bins again. Hello? Hello? Janine, I think I've gone deaf. I hope you're not going to go on about loft conversions this morning. Loft? Oh, gosh, no, no, I've forgotten all about them. You see, these so-called loft conversions are just a passing fad, Janine, like Christianity or Roland Rat. Ah, good morning, Julian. Geoffrey. Sleep well? What? I haven't slept well since... Can you believe this? Following new research, the boiling point of yeast has been officially upgraded to 76.2 degrees Celsius. Oh, really? Let's have a look. <sighs> you don't think he heard what we did the other night, do you? Of course not. He was definitely asleep. I even poked him with a pencil before we began. Perverts! Shouldn't you have left for the model railway exhibition? It's been cancelled. Cancelled? Apparently several tramps broke into the hall last night and tried to have sex with the trains. And you do not want to know what they did to the donut stall, do you? But you are still going out today? Oh, not on your life. There's a 12-hour Dad's Army Marathon on cable. I have no intention of missing it. Oh. Jeffrey, something bothering you? Oh, no. Everything's fine. I really like sleeping at the end of your bed and having all Dad's trains in my room. Oh, well, I must say I'm a bit surprised, but... Hello! I'm being sarcastic. Oh, darling, look, I promise you I'll sort it out, but first I need some way to get your father out of the house today. Lock him in the shed and fill it with concrete. <gasps> That's it. Dead army. Old people. Miss Lee. Please, Roy, I'm on the phone. But, Miss Lee. Shush, Roy. I'm sorry, Janine, you were saying. No, I see, and your husband really doesn't mind. Miss Lee. Yes, I'm fine. Thanks, Janine, but I'm. I've done it again. Roy, how would you like a day out with a very nice man? Is he a fireman? has happened. Charlton has been rushed to hospital. Who the hell is Charlton? My brother. <sighs> the man who mistook your car for a whale last week. <laughs> and then blocked your exhaust pipe with Creel. <laughs> he came to dinner yesterday. Oh, him. Well, what happened now? Uh, he got his toothpaste mixed up with a tube of super glue. What? Again? That's three times this week. The thing is, I've got to go to Axton Emergency and bring him home. But I've just promised work I'd take some old folk out on a day out. But I really don't want to let them down. Well, don't look at me. I'm not doing either. Oh, you clumsy sow! 
sorry, darling, I must have... Hang on. If you're wanting to watch old people, why don't you... Absolutely not. No way. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I am not taking old folk on a day out. Never. My old man. So, an heir hasn't arrived yet, after all. And it says here that the only way to guarantee you have male offspring is to mate with... And then the next two pages are torn out. But page 48 starts with the words, another male. Oh. Well, where's we going to find one of them round here? My old man, Now, if you've been rushed to the hospital. Hospital? Is there something wrong with me? Oh, then? no, 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 I've not told him about the loft conversion, you see. Oh, so why do I have to go to the hospital? You don't. I told Knife that you'd gone to the hospital so that he'd be forced to take some old folk on a day trip. So he's gone to the hospital then? No, he's taken some old folk on a day out. To the hospital? No, to the tea rooms. So, has someone from the tea rooms had an accident with some hot tea and had to go to hospital? No. Look, Charlton, it isn't important. Well, I hope not. Anyway, look what boozy Greg gave me. <laughs> Take that, Professor Marcus Wilson! Take that, social reintegration program! <laughs> <laughs> How much has he had to drink? Nothing. <coughs> Dad, where are we going? Chesney! Geoffrey. Where the Dustin Hoffman did you come from? I've been here since we left. Mum made me come. She said we don't spend enough time together. What? How dare she usurp my authority? No, no, no. I say I am trying to drive. Will you please shut that truck up? Sorry? Do you want us to pull this paper mache truck up in the loft? No. Shall we play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, Vera? Oh, yes, I like that game. Oh, Vera, your first question for nine million pounds. What is a cloud? Is it a sky fluff, Elsie? Oh, very well done. <coughs> Question two. Roy, what do cows eat? Is it A, bananas, B, seeds, C, beans, or D, bed covering? Apples. Incorrect. It is C, beans. Burn the witch. Fair right. Next question. What happens when you touch a kettle? What's a kettle? Is the kettle on fire, Elsie? Oh, I'll have to phone a friend. Ring, ring. Hello, Mr. Knife. Is the kettle on fire? What? Is it a burning kettle or a cold kettle? I don't know. Look, how come you had multiple choice for the second question, but not for the first or third questions? And what sort of a stupid question is, what happens if you touch a kettle? Couldn't affairs. Oh, what does it matter anyway? Shut up, Justin. Jeffrey. Look, it's solely meant to be multiple choice, and there's only meant to be one contestant. Play it right or don't play it at all. Yes, but all the teeth are pulled out. Um, so why exactly are you called Boozy Greg? That name is just a bit of fun. See, I used to be in the Merchant Navy, and aboard the ship I served on, there was another seaman called uh, Gregory Parsons. 
And all the boys used to say I looked a bit like him. Oh. And did Gregory Parsons like booze? No. No, no not really. Are you fiddling with my seat? Done it again. Look, brother! I invented us a new fertility bonnet to help us catch a mate. <sighs> Boy, that's gonna work. Hopefully these locals will have some sort of phone we can use. I'll call the wife and she can come and pick us up. Is this the tea room, Celsie? I expect so. <laughs> I said to use the tranquilizer gun. Use the toilet. What do you think they're going to do to us? Ah, finally! Right now, listen very carefully. I demand to use your toilet! Oh, there'll be time for that later, sweetheart. After the wedding. Wedding? Ah, we was going to marry you, and you was going to give us some handsome sons, and then we'll inherit this your form. Sons? But, but I don't even have a womb! And this is our chief bridesmaid. Jonathan, what do you think you're doing? My name is Jeffrey! Knife would never have agreed to this. Still, it's too late to change it. At least now he's got the whole loft for his railway and Jeffrey gets his room back to normal. So was Jeffrey the one who went to hospital? I'm the least important thing in your life. Now, come along. You know that's only 40% true. Our brother, uh, we've forgotten the cake. We're very excited, Mr Jethro. Yeah, we haven't been to a wedding since Minnie Potter got banged up by that gypsy. <laughs> Think about what you're getting into, boy. Does your mother really want you to become an accessory to bigamy? I'll be happy if you're arrested. Those two farmers have been more like fathers to me than you have, and I've only known them ten minutes. They'd never make me sleep in the same room as them, or forget my name, or send me off to see a psychiatrist. But, but you wear ghastly clothes and listen to bleak music. You, your visits to Dr. Palmer for your own good. Now, Jeffrey, I'm going to show you a series of pictures. I want you to tell me the first thing that comes into your head. Ready? I've only ever wanted the best for you, son. Please, get me out of this chair. I... I do love you, really. Come on, what do you say? Sucker. Pardon? But nothing. Somebody think of something! I might have a plan. I'm listening! Well, that didn't work. Somebody! Anybody! Please help! Get us out of here! Dad! Look! Ah, oh, splendid! We can hide behind that! I've got a better idea. Lucky for you boys, I've done a bit of flying in my time. on the old crouch, you know. One time, I've done it again. Oh, what is it you keep doing? Sorry, chaps. See you back in Blighty. This is that 
absolutely perfect. I take back everything I said about Boozy Greg. Yeah, bit of a shame that he was really an undercover secret agent. And after he finished the loft, he tried to take over the world with those genetically engineered mutant clowns and then tried to make us eat radioactive <gasps> fallout and brainwash us into destroying the United Nations General Assembly. And I saved us by shaking off his programming oh. and recalibrating the giant magnet he built on the moon so that it destroyed his underwater secret Ooh. headquarters. It was all BAM! BOOM! Oh. WHAM! <laughs> Or, or did I just imagine that? <sighs> I don't want to die! I don't want to die! I can fly it! What? I can fly the plane! This is just like level 7 of my game! The game will do a little calculator! Go right ahead! For once, just trust me! Please! Oh, OK, Jeffrey. Home. Stay away from my bins! I'm freezing to death out here. It's hardly my fault if the house has been declared structurally unsafe. You're the one who flew a biplane into it. But don't blame me, Janine. It was the boy at the controls, and it was you who ordered the loft into which he crashed. Honestly, I still can't believe you'd go behind my back like that. I said I'm sorry. I was just trying to do the right thing. You know, Nicey, we could keep warm if we shared our body heat. Are you suggesting we... Don't even think about it. More Comedy Lab next week at 11.45. Action from the fourth day's play of the first test in India, coming up on Channel 4. Oh, no.